Welcome to the safety video for the optics project. In this project, you'll be building an optical projector, which is going to use an ordinary flashlight, a cutout transparency, and a lens to project an image onto the wall. The main safety hazard in this experiment is the lens. So the lens is designed to concentrate light and create a spot. So as I adjust the distance of the light source to the table, I can see that light gets concentrated. When we build this project, we must do it indoors and away from sunlight. We don't want the lens to focus sunlight to a spot and create a fire hazard. Also, when you're done building the project, be sure to store it in a dark place away from sunlight. For the second project, this is using a laser level to shine light through a block and measure how much it bends. Lasers present an eye hazard. You should never look at a laser directly or even the reflection off of surfaces for most laser types. This particular laser emits a red light and the light comes out this aperture. So when you use it, you first should set it up such that it's aimed not facing any other people. You wanna make sure that they don't inadvertently look at the light. Okay, now that you've set this up, and you turn on the laser beam, you'll notice that the light comes out of the aperture and when it strikes the block, it creates um, the refracted beam, which goes through here, but there's also a beam that goes sort of around the block, so both above it and below it. And you can see that it's creating a bright spot on my fingers. So make sure when you're doing this experiment that you set up in such a way and you know where all the beams are going so that they don't go towards other people. And also just be mindful not to look at other people's setup during this experiment. We want to protect our eyes. At the end, be sure to turn off the laser level before you close up for the day. Welcome to the safety video on electronic circuits. We're going to demonstrate some of the safety concerns um, by building a circuit and talking it through. So I have two AA batteries, a battery clip, a light emitting diode, a 470 ohm resistor, and a bird pin. The bird pin has two um, uh, connections that are, are, that are separate. And I have my digital multimeter and breadboard. So the first thing to be mindful of is that these batteries, although they are very common and you use them all the time, they actually can provide a lot of current and they can create hazards such as burning and melting of components. So if I plug in my batteries as usual, and I'm not paying a lot of attention, and I just let my components sit, and the red and the black wires were to touch each other and create a short circuit, there would be so much current flowing through these AA batteries that over time, it'll burn a hole, most likely, in the plastic because the batteries will overheat. These batteries can provide over an amp of current. So when you're not building a circuit, or sorry, when you're not testing a circuit, or when you're not actively using it, and definitely by the end of the day, take out the batteries from the battery clip so that your circuit is unpowered. When you're building your circuit, you also want to make sure that you don't have power connected to your circuit, because as you move components on the board, you may accidentally create a short circuit. Short circuits are the biggest hazard um, when building in these electronic circuits. So we'll first build a circuit with a light emitting diode, and I'm gonna plug the long leg of the LED into column 10, the short leg is in column 11, and then I have this 470 ohm resistor, I'm going to plug one end into column 11, and the other leg into column 15. So now I'm ready to connect my battery clip, but again, the batteries are out when I do this step. So I'm gonna connect the black end, or ground, into column 15, and the red end, which is positive, into column 10. This is going to create a circuit where I have current from the battery flowing through the LED, through the resistor, which is limiting the amount of current to a safe level, and then lighting up the LED. So with two AA batteries, that's about 3 volts, and 470 ohms, let's round it to 500 ohms, that'll produce 6 milliamps, 0 0.006 amps of current. These LEDs are rated for 20 milliamps of current. So this is a safe amount of current, and this is why we need the resistor to safely limit the current. So now that we've built our circuit, we can plug the battery into the battery clip, and we can see that the light emitting diode lights up to a safe level. 
In this configuration, we can measure the voltage. So with a closed circuit, we're allowed to measure voltages across any of the components in our circuit. We cannot measure current in this configuration. So we'll first talk about measuring voltage. So I have my digital multimeter set to DC volts, which is the red. As a check, if I connect the two leads together, I should get zero volts. Now I'm ready to measure the voltage in my circuit. So I can put my probes at two locations of the circuit. So I can measure the total voltage, which is the voltage across the batteries. So the two batteries together give me 3.18 volts, so slightly higher than 1.5 volts each. And I can measure the voltage just across the LED by touching the two uh, probes together. And I see across the LED is 1.92 volts. Across the resistor is the remaining 1.24 volts. And so the amount of current flowing is actually less than 6 milliamps because there's only 1.24 volts across the resistor of 470 ohms. So it's about a third of what I initially uh, estimated, so about 2 milliamps of current. Now, if we want to measure the current, what we need to do with our digital multimeter, because we want to assume that we don't know how much current is flowing, we want to measure it on the safest setting first. So we're going to go to the DC 10 amp setting because if we exceed the limits of the current, um, we can blow out the fuse that's inside this digital multimeter. So we go to the 10, mil, or the 10 amp setting and to measure on the setting, we have to move the um, probe to the opposite side. Now, I mentioned to measure current, we cannot measure the circuit as is. In order to do a current measurement, you have to insert the multimeter in series with the circuit. So I actually have to break the circuit open if I want to measure current. So I've disconnected my um, battery and I'm going to move it over by one pin. So this is now in column 16 instead of column 15. So you can see that the circuit is broken. The current wants to flow through the LED and then the resistor, but I have one end of the resistor in column 15, the other end is in column 16. So I have an open circuit. What I want to do is I want to insert my current probe in between these two points. So one end in column 15, one in column 16, and the digital multimeter with its low resistance will complete the circuit. Now it's difficult to plug these probes directly into the board, so instead what we'll use is this Berg pin. This Berg pin is electrically isolating between these two pins, and I can slide it in and essentially use it as a probe. It allows me to make contacts above the circuit board. So I plug it in in columns 15 and 16, and basically now when I connect the red side and I make contact with the pin that's in column 15, and I touch it on the black side, what I'll do is I'll have current flowing through the LED, through the resistor, through the digital multimeter, back out to the other side, and then it's going to light up the circuit. So we can see that the measured value is 0.002 amps. So it's two milliamps. That number is less than the limit of the more sensitive setting, the DC milliamp setting. So now that I know that I'm only flowing about two milliamps of current, I can safely measure the current on the more sensitive setting without having to worry about blowing out the fuse. If you blow out the fuse, there's an explanation video about how to replace it. We're going to move this pin back to this other setting because on this setting we can measure milliamp current. So we're going to turn our multimeter to the DC milliamp setting and we're going to move our probe to the right hand side. Now we can probe the amount of current that's flowing through the circuit. So we get a much more accurate reading, 2.69 milliamps. And you can check whether the current that's flowing through this whole circuit, through the LED and the resistor, is what you expected given the resistance of 470 ohms, given the voltage that we measured across the resistor, I believe it was 1.24 volts. You can check whether that agrees. Okay, now that we're done with this particular experiment, make sure that we take out the batteries from the battery clip and safely set this aside. I'm next going to talk about circuit or project, uh, mini project 518. Um, this is another circuit project and it needs a lot of attention um, because it presents safety hazards if you plug in things with the transistor incorrectly. So I'm going to turn off my digital multimeter and I'm going to introduce these new components. 
So there's a transistor, there's this one kilo ohm resistor. I'm basically going to build the circuit in figure 524. The transistor you have to be very careful with. So this is the circuit that I'm going to build. I'm trying to build, I have a transistor, I have the three volt source, I have a nine volt source, I have an LED, I have a resistor. And so in order for you to use the transistor, you have to know what the pin configurations are. So the pin configurations for the transistor look like this. You'll notice the transistor has a flat side and a rounded side. We're using this particular transistor, BC547. Other transistors have different pin configurations. So make sure you know the pin configuration of the transistor that you're working with. The pin configuration for this one, the leftmost, if you're looking at the flat side, is the collector, C, then the middle is the base, and the third is the emitter. On the circuit diagram shown here, the collector is here. This is the collector. This pin is the base and this pin is the emitter. So when we plug this into our circuit board, we have to keep track of how we are plugging it in. So I'm gonna take the LED and the resistor out of the circuit, and I'm gonna first plug in my collector base emitter, which is this part of the circuit. So what it says to do in the, uh, in the instructions is to label which columns these nodes are going to be. So I'm gonna first plug this in and establish a set of columns. Okay, so the way that I've plugged it in, my collector is in column 20. My base is right next to it in column 21. And my emitter is in column 22. So according to this labeling, the next thing that I can think about is I need the ground for my three volt source and my nine volt source to be collected to the emitter. I need my one kilo ohm resistor to touch the base, which is column 21, and I need my 470 ohms and my LED to be connected to the collector, which is column 20. So I'm going to work first with my LED and my 470 ohms. So what I'm going to do, I see that the collector is in column 20, so my 470 ohm resistor needs to go from column 20 to a different column. And it really doesn't matter which column. I'm going to pick column 15. So I'm going to label on my diagram here that this is column 15. Next, I'm going to work with my LED. So I'm going to have the anode side, the positive side, is the top. The cathode side, which is the bottom, which is the short leg, that's going to be in column 15. So my LED is going to plug into column 15, and the other side of the LED is in column 14. So this point here in my circuit, and it's good practice to label which columns you've plugged things in so that you can keep track of things. It's gonna tell me that now for my nine volt battery clip here, I'm going to plug in the positive side into column 14. And I'm going to plug the negative side into the emitter of this ground symbol, which is column 22. Okay, notice I haven't plugged in the battery just yet. So I have connected column 14 for the positive side of the LED, column 22, which is the emitter of the transistor. So I've built this part of the circuit. Now I can add the other part of the circuit. So I have a one kilo ohm resistor that I need to connect to column 21, and I'm going to have the other end connect somewhere on the right side of the circuit. So one end of the resistor is gonna go into column 21, which is the base. The other end of the resistor, I'm just gonna plug in and see where it ends up. So it looks like it's column 28. So this end of the resistor is column 28. Now I can connect my three volt battery so I want the positive of the three volt battery in column 28. And I want the negative end of the three volt battery in column 22. OK, 
okay. And now I just double check that I've plugged in. The two browns are gonna be in column 22, which is where the emitter of the transistor is. I have the one kilo ohm going from 21 to 28. I have the three volt in 20, oh, looks like I made a mistake. Okay, so this is shifted by one column. This is in column 27. This is why it's good to double check your circuits. So this needs to be in column 28, same as the resistor. Okay, so I've double checked that. On the other end, the collector, which is column number 20, goes to the 470 ohms, which is column 15. Then it goes to the LED, which is column 14. And then I have my nine volt going from column 14 to column 22. So I have correctly built the circuit. Now I'm ready to plug it in and see that it works. So I'm gonna start off, it doesn't matter which one you put first, but I'm gonna start off by applying three volts to um, the base. And then I'm going to connect, ah, my connector came out, so I should plug this back in. So I'm going to connect, and generally I should have taken out these batteries before I plugged it in, but it was just a, a simple connection. So I'm going to plug in the 9 volt battery, and you can see that the LED lights up. When you build the circuit, it's very important to monitor it. Oftentimes, if you connect this incorrectly, or if these legs of the resistor are plugged into the wrong columns so that you've built something other than the circuit, you will short circuit the transistor and this will heat up either the battery for the three volts or the nine volts. We've seen in the past that people have managed to burn out their three volt battery. We've seen in the past, or the clip, people have burnt out the connector for the nine volt. We've even seen people burn the backside of the protoboard. So it's very important to check your connections against the circuit diagram. Don't just try to wire things according to the picture. The picture is very difficult to see exactly where things are plugged in, and plus you don't learn how to build the circuit. So the important steps, you lay out where your transistor is, you're making sure that you follow the pin configuration, that it goes collector, base, emitter, if you're looking at the flat side. You should also double check that the type of transistor you have is this BC547. Sometimes transistors instead go emitter base collector instead, so just be mindful of that. And when you build the circuit, make sure you see exactly which columns are going in. So if, for example, I accidentally connected this resistor here, if I had shifted it over to the base, I would essentially create a short circuit where I have nine volts and three volts connected to the same part of the transistor. This would cause the circuit to melt. In this activity, one of the things that you're checking is as I plug in and, and unplug and unplug and essentially change the amount of current that's going into the base of the transistor, I can turn an on and off this light emitting diode. So to do that check, you can see that if I plug and unplug the current that's going into the base, I'm controlling the amount of current that's going through from the collector um, through the LED in the circuit. So for safety, um, make sure that you double check your circuit configurations. Make sure that you're not plugging in two ends like the red and the black of any of the batteries to the same point and make sure that your transistor is facing the correct direction double check its columns to see that the columns all line up with where you think they are if you're shifted if you shift your transistor over by one most likely you'll burn out your circuit okay so when you're done you will disconnect the batteries from the battery clip and you can store your project um, afterwards thank you